For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show, episode 60. So the first quarter is officially over and I've got some questions for you about how you're managing your time. Truth be told, I had a really powerful coaching session with my coach and she was asking me questions about, hey, as the CEO of this company, doing all the things you're doing, are you spending your 24 hours every single day doing what matters most? And it was such a powerful conversation for me, I wanna share the same thing back with you. So here's how it went. I sat there on this coaching call and she said to me, Tom, can you remind me what is your h -butt? What is the highest and best use of your time? You know, we all have 24 hours in a day. How we spend that time is the difference between someone that sells three homes a year or 30 homes a year or 130 homes a year or 1,300 homes in a year. We all have the same 24 hours. How you use your time is the biggest degree of separation. So I would ask you, if you were to prioritize what are the highest and best uses, what would you say? I, I bet it would be something like, I need to do some prospecting, right? Remember, this uh, show is brought to you by the number five. You might say, I need to get more listings. You might say, I need to do more marketing. I need to go on more appointments. I need to do more open houses. What I'd be mindful of, and my coach and I worked on this with me, is less is more. Less is more. If I asked you the question, what are the absolute most important things that have to happen in your business week in and week out in order for you to have easy, flowing, powerful, spot on time management, only doing what matters most, what are the four to five most important priorities? If you really thought about it, what are the four to five most important priorities? You already know the answers for you, where your business is, what you need to do. Of course, then that brings up the second question she asked. Have you analyzed your time versus your priorities? So if you can imagine, you know, the coach getting some coaching, I open up my laptop, I sit down with my priorities, and I went through the last nine weeks looking for, okay, I say these are my, my priorities. This is what matters most. This is the most important stuff for me and my business. Now, how much time am I actually spending? And guess what I discovered, like probably you, I was about half my time on stuff and half my time on my priorities. And, and listen, I, I am a productivity junkie. Like I really pride myself on doing what matters most, doing first, you know, making sure you're doing the tough stuff, all those cliches around time. Like I'm really on that stuff. And yet when I analyzed my own time, I was guilty. Half my time I was, listen, doing things that were fun, doing things that looked busy, doing things that were productive. But at the end of the day, I had too many time traps, too many time wasters, that things that appeared to be important in the moment, but when I reflect on them in the context of what is the highest and best use of my time, what are my priorities, they became just time suckers. They just became busy work that felt good in the moment, but ultimately doesn't move the needle. You know what I'm talking about? Like you can be busy. It's like um, my friend called it the rocking chair syndrome. Like too many people are in a rocking chair. And I said, rocking chair syndrome, what do you, what do you mean? He said, it, you think you're moving, but you ain't going anywhere, right? You're just like sitting in a rocking chair going back and forth. We need to be like in action, moving towards the accomplishment of our goals. Anything you're doing, that isn't leading you towards the accomplishment of your goals is a time trap. So think about it. Question number one, what are your highest priorities? Question number two, have you analyzed your time versus your priorities to try and get a percentage of the last three weeks, six weeks, nine weeks, how you're really using your time and are you really doing what you know you need to be doing? Now here's what's great. You might be having your best year ever right now and like me, only spending half your time on what matters most. What does that tell you? Baby, your upside potential is enormous. Let's look at question number three. What or who are your time traps? Where do you get stuck? Who gets you stuck? Where do you get stuck? What gets you derailed? It's super important at your level, at my level, to be honest about what are the time traps? What gets in our way? What holds us back? Um, maybe it is you know, too much time on social media. Maybe it's um, the fact that you don't type fast 
So as you're typing, it just takes you forever. Maybe it's you're not proficient at something and you're trying to do it anyway versus delegating it or outsourcing it. And that's probably the biggest one for the vast majority of people watching this. You're doing an activity that is like a $12 an hour activity when you want to make $400 an hour. That's a time trap. Like um, you, um, Amazon Prime. Have you used Amazon Prime yet? Right, so Amazon Prime. So like, I could be sitting inside my office and I'm like, I didn't bring my iPhone charger. Now I can get in my car and I can drive back to my house, 20 minutes, grab it, say hi to the dogs, you know, probably see a family member and then drive back. So now I'm 45, 50 minutes in because I lost an iPhone charger. I go to Amazon Prime, I spend 30 bucks, within 30 minutes, someone delivers the iPhone charger and I probably gotta buy a bottle, you know, a case of water or something like that to get to the $30 minimum. But the bottom line is, what a huge, that, that would save me an hour. How many hours are you blowing every single day, every single week, that aren't just costing you your goals? What happens is, because we're behind and not achieving our goals, what do we do? We work later in the night, we finally get around to you know, doing our searches and managing our emails and all this stuff, and instead of being with our family and our loved ones and our friends, we're on our phone trying to solve the problems that we didn't effectively solve during the day. You with me on this? Because you let your time get derailed. What or who are your time traps? Super important. Number four, she asked me, and this is my favorite, what does your ideal week look like? You know, grab the old day planner, Outlook, I don't, whatever you wanna do, and say, okay, what does my ideal week look like? If I know what my priorities are, in blocks of time, how much time would I spend doing each one of those activities? Um, I think of so many people that I've been blessed to coach in my time, and when I ask this question, what's your ideal week look like? Inevitably, they'll say, I want to go on two or three listing appointments a day. Two to three listing appointments a day. They're like, that's me at my best. That's when I, I'm doing what I love, I'm meeting with clients, I'm in the hunt, I'm negotiating, I'm selling, I'm marketing, do all the things I love. And then I say, well, let's, let's reverse engineer, right? You going on two to three appointments a day, what would have to happen before, 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 before to make that happen? It starts with the end result in mind. You've got to decide what is your ideal week look like? Once you do that, and I'm assuming it'll be full of all these, now we've got a starting ground. So as we sit here, right, ending the first quarter, whether your business is up, flat, or slightly behind your goal, how you use your time is the great degree of separation. So Taz, let's slide over a little bit here, and I wanna talk about some solutions. So if I was sitting with you one-on-one, -on -one, the first thing I would say to you is, hey, can you list out your priorities? So you might say, you know, Tom, my highest and use, best use is, Number one, to book lots of appointments because appointments are the only leading indicator of a healthy sales business. Whoever has the most appointments wins. A, a bad appointment is better than no appointments. You with me? Like, there's just something good about being face to face with customers to see who wants to sign contracts and move forward, right? So booking appointments, going on appointments, communication, huge priority, communicating with my team, communicating with my clients, communicating with my partners, escrow mortgage title, my manager, everybody that's involved in the business to make sure that we're all informed, involved, and empowered, especially when we're talking about clients' homes and transactions, right? So communication and then managing your business. Now, if you were to list all those out, the second thing I tell you is plan your week out in advance in blocks of time, and the only thing I want you to think about is how do I get ahead of the drama? See. Too many of us live in a reactionary world. We, we wake up in the morning, we don't have a plan, ah, right? An, an email and a problem becomes our priority instead of, I set an intention to help 35 families buy and sell real estate this year and do it in a beautiful way, supporting and serving my community, making the money I wanna make, you know, spending the time I wanna spend with my family, having a business in life by design. If that is your aim, you can't wake up without a schedule. You can't wake up without knowing your priorities because guess what? Real estate is like um, a black hole. Like once you get sucked into the drama, it's over. You know it and I know it. We have to take control of our time and take control of our schedule. First, by identifying our priorities. Secondly, blocks of time with the schedule. And then number three, you gotta share your schedule. Now my advice is, I would print out your schedule and I'd hang it on the wall. Like every week, that would just be my routine. Maybe it's a daily schedule if that's just easier for you. A daily schedule. This is what I gotta do today. You print it out, you put it inside your office, you put it inside your cubicle, you share it with your family, you give it to your manager, you give it to your team, you give it to your coach. And what you're really doing is you're just creating some accountability 
around what you're supposed to be doing. And when one of those time traps walks by, God bless their little bobby socks, when they walk by and go, hey, got a minute, oh, you're right? You could say, I, I do, but right now I really got to focus on this because I only got a little more time. Does that make sense? Look, time, 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 time. You got 24 hours, I got 24 hours. What's the difference between an agent that sells three homes a year, 30 homes a year, or 130 homes a year? I'm sure there's a hundred little subtle things that we could discuss. At the end of the day, it's who they, how they, excuse me, manage their time. That's the game. So my message for you today is answer those questions. Do the analysis yourself and start making some adjustments to your time to have the second quarter be even better than the first quarter in 2016. Thanks so much for watching. Remember always, your strategy matters and now more than ever, your time and how you run your time absolutely rule. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>